Okay, so this is section 1.7, which is modeling with functions. We're going to talk about functions from formulas, functions from graphs, functions from verbal descriptions, and functions from data. Okay, so example one says a maximum value problem. It says a square of side x inches is cut out of each corner of an 8 inch by 15 inch piece of cardboard. So if we have... Here's our cardboard, this is 8, this is 15, so we're cutting out a square from every corner that is going to be x by x. Try this again. x by x, okay? And then the sides are going to be folded up, so you can imagine, I can't really do dotted lines, but they're going to be folded up to make a box, an open-topped box, okay? So A says to write the volume of the box as a function of x. So our volume of the box, so volume of a rectangular prism, is going to be length times width times height. So if you can visualize when I fold up the box, this distance right here is going to be 8 minus 2x because I'm taking away the two sides that we're folding up. Then the long distance here is going to be 15 minus 2x. Let's make sure that looks like a 15. Okay, and then finally the height of the box is just going to be x. So there's our function. So it says to find the domain of v as a function of x. Note that the model imposes restrictions on x. So if we were to multiply all this out, it's just going to be a cubic graph, but which we know domain is all real numbers. But this is an example of because it's a context, we are going to have restrictions on our domain. So for this, um, we have to think about, okay, x can't be, we have to think where, where can x be? So I'm going to take the short side and think about the short side. So if x was... 5, that's not going to work because I can't have this length be 5 and this length be 5 and then still the box be 8 inches, okay? So we have to think what would be the biggest number x could be and that would be 4 because that would just be folding the box in half. So we can say that our domain, we know that x needs to be some number, so we can say our domain is from... 0 to 4. Okay, then it says to graph v as a function of x over the domain found in the part, part b and use the maximum finder on your graph to determine how the maximum volume such a box can hold. So I graph, I just pulled the graph from the PowerPoint, but um, this, is, this is what it should look like if you graph it. Um, so that tells you that the maximum volume would be 90.7 inches cubed, and that maximum volume would occur when your x value is one and two thirds inches. So maximum volume, and I'm getting that from right here. So is when x is equal to one and two thirds inches. And that would cause your y value, that's your maximum, to be 90.7 inches cubed. And so I guess that just answered D. <laughs> How big should you cut out squares be in order to produce the bo box of maximum volume? So your squares should be 1 and 2 thirds inches for each side. Okay, so that is example one. So the next one says, grain is leaking through a hole in a storage bin at a constant rate of 5 cubic inches per minute. The grain forms a cone-shaped pile on the ground below. As it grows, the height of the cone always remains equal to its radius. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. If the cone is one foot tall now, how tall will it be in one hour? So I included here the volume of a cone equation or formula and the height is always equal to the radius. So notice here we have an r squared h, but if they're equal, we can combine them and make them just one letter, which is h. So we can write it like volume equals one third pi h cubed. 
So the first thing we want to do is find out what the volume is to start. And so we are going to say, and then note that this is five cubic inches per minute. And it says the cone is one foot tall. So we have to be careful with units here. So I'm going to make a note that this is 12 inches. Okay, so we're gonna start by saying our volume is equal to one third pi times twelve cubed, and that would be five hundred and seventy six pi inches cubed. Okay, and then so we want to say one hour later. So that's going to be 60 minutes. So that's the other thing. So we want to do one hour. We have to convert into minutes. So it's 60 minutes times our rate, which is five cubic inches per minute. I'm going to run out of space here. So 60 times five going to give us 300, 300 cubic inches. I'm out of space. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we want to know our total volume now is going to be, we're going to take the 576 pi and we're going to add it to 300. So that would be 576 pi plus 300 gives us 2,109.56 inches cubed. So that's our total volume. And so then now I'm going to go back up here where I have more space. I'm going to solve for H in our volume equation. So we're going to say 2,109. 0.56 equals one third pi h cubed. So if we take that number and we're going to multiply by three and divide by pi and then take the cube root, We get that H is equal to 12.63 inches. Okay, and just to note, what I realized is this is slightly different than the one in the notes. <clears throat> mm, losing my voice here. <clears throat> so this one has five cubic inches per minute. The one in the notes has eight cubic inches per minute. So there's a slight difference. So if you're following along with this and connecting it to the notes, just be aware of that. Okay, so those are modeling with functions. Let me know if you have any questions.